Hi everyone, my name's Brenton. Welcome to episode two of Kid Lit Corner, where I talk about children's books and writing and reviewing books and just in general one of my largest passions which is sharing children's books and promoting children's books that I want people to discover for the first time, read, appreciate, share themselves or maybe talk about books that you've read before but forgot it about and might encourage you to seek them out again. I love children's books. I am an emerging children's writer and I love reading and collecting them because I think children's literature is really important just as a human. I think children's books give you empathy, life skills, teaches you about hope, dreams, love. So many things that are important in the world can be found in a book, especially a picture book. So here in my kid lit corner, I'm going to try to do regular videos just to share my passion with whoever happens to be watching out there. I've got all my picture books behind me, my picture book collection. A lot of the books are from my childhood that I've kept or tracked down uh, as I've gotten older. It's got a poster of one of my favourite books called Nim's Island. And I've also got a stack of picture books that I want to tell you about today. So the theme for the books today is books about being different which I relate to a lot because when I was a kid I was always different for a lot of reasons but a big reason was I loved books and I loved reading and I was known as the bookworm in my family and at school. Being different is a universal thing, isn't it? Everyone feels like it but it doesn't really get talked about much and when you're a kid being different can feel like the end of the world and when you have a problem, especially as a kid, the answer can always be found in a book about that topic. So I hope some of these books you might be able to share with kids or maybe just share with the kid that you were if you're an adult now because I think they'll help. Help show that being different is okay Accepting yourself for being different is okay, and it's actually a lot better to just be yourself than try to fit a mold. So let's get into the books. The first one is called Too Loud Lily by Sophie Laguna and Carrie Argent. This book, I only discovered it last year, it nearly makes me cry every time I read it. I just love it, honestly. It's about Lily the Hippo who no matter what she does, if she tells a story, if she reads a funny book and laughs, if she talks, if she stamps, walks around and stomps around, she's always told the same thing, you're too loud. And it really sort of makes her put her light under a bushel. She goes into herself, she feels anxious, she feels shy, she feels like it's not okay to just be who she is until a new teacher comes to school and a new opportunity for Lily to try something new arises and Lily discovers maybe there's benefits to being loud, maybe there's benefits to just being who you are, being yourself. Carrie Argent's illustrations make me want to cry because she evokes so much emotion in poor Lily's face in some of the pictures and Sophie Laguna's text is so poignant. It's a wonderful read. Uh, 21st anniversary edition was just released last year so you can still get it. If you want your heart to totally melt for poor Lily Hippo, then you've got to buy this book. This is such a classic, Luke's Way of Looking by Nadia Wheatley and Matt Otley. It's about a boy named Luke and he's very artistic and creative and he loves drawing and he loves painting and he loves creating artwork but he's always told by his teacher at school that he's doing it wrong, he's painting wrong, he's seeing things wrong, he's seeing the world wrong, 
his pictures are too weird and abstract and weird. And Luke starts to believe him until he visits a museum and discovers that a lot of other people are like him. A lot of people see the world a different way. Luke looks at the world differently and he embraces that. And it's a great ending. I love it. Little Puggle Song by Vicky Conley and Helene Magathon. Excuse me if I'm saying these incorrectly. It's just such a sweet book and I sort of fell in love with it when I first read it in a bookshop. It's about Puggle, who's an echidna, and he just wants to find his voice, find his song, but every time he tries to sing, tries to find his voice, nothing comes out right. Everyone says he's not good enough, he doesn't have the right skills, and everyone else finds their voice. So when there's a choir, Puggle feels really left out. But then something comes up where Puggle realises that not finding your voice in one way doesn't mean you can't find your voice in a different way. You'll have to read it to know what happens. But it's really special and really sweet. There's a sequel called Little Puggles Christmas as well, which I have not got because I can't find a copy anywhere. It's always sold out, so it must be wonderful. This book is a classic, and I will say it right now, it is criminal that this is out of print. I know so many young people my age, mid, late 20s, early 30s, that remember this book from childhood. You might remember it too. Bunyip's Don't by Sally Hodges and Kim Gamble. It's an incredible book, and like Two Lad Lily, I want to cry every time I read it, because little Bunyip... He wants to have fun and he wants to frolic and he wants to be free and he wants to enjoy and have parties and celebrate and Big Bunyip says that's not what Bunyips do. Big Bunyip tells Little Bunyip that he has to be miserable and grumpy and depressed and live in the grey, dark area of the swamp. But Little Bunyip sees a shimmering light across the swamp. He sees new friends having fun and he longs to go and join them. And Little Bunyip learns that not listening to naysayers and negativity can really open you up and let you be yourself and do what you really want to do. It's such a wonderful book. I, I want to campaign to bring it back into print, but maybe you can find it in a second-hand bookshop or at your state library or local council library. It's seriously, it, it's, it's a classic. It, the themes are so topical. They'll always be relevant. Being different. Accepting who you are. That'll always be relevant. So this book should be in print. But please get a copy if you can. It, I just, I love it. I love it. I Am Thomas by Libby Gleason and Armin Greeter. This is a wonderful book. It's sort of an adult YA crossover picture book. If you know Libby's work, uh, especially with Armin as well, they've done several books together, you sort of know it's going to be quite political, about social issues, um, and they, Libby and Armin really touch on a topic that I relate to because I'm close to high school age and when you're in high school you're told you get a job you try and get a house you have to go to university you do this you do that the government says this your parents say that and it's about Thomas who hears all of this everything you're supposed to do in life everything you're supposed to do in society and says no I don't want to do it that way it's a great book one for the sort of older readers of picture books um, picture books are for everyone, by the way. It's not just little kids' books. There's so many picture books that are actually made just for teenagers or young adults or adults. And this is one of them. It's a really powerful read. Fay Mouth by Hazel Edwards and Kilmini Nyland. Sadly, this is out of print as well. But like I say, if you can find a second hand, please do. You can't go wrong. It's about Fay Mouth, who is this character. You might be noticing something about Fay Mouth. 
she's not a mouse. But she's born into a mouse family, and she starts to realise that she's not like everyone else in her family. She doesn't like cheese, for one. She's a bit bigger than everyone. She has whiskers. And she's very furry. And she has sharp teeth. I really love this story because it's so quirky and so funny. Really great illustrations by Kilmini as well. And Hazel write the text is imbued with a lot of themes that are really relevant now about fitting into families and what family looks like and how you can relate to people in relationships in general, but also about accepting that just because you might not fit in somewhere doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad thing to go off and find a place where you do fit in. And it's a really great story to read. The Famous Wispy Bell by Gwenda Smythe and Craig Smith. I loved this when I was in preschool. It was read to us by a teacher. And I spent about 15 years trying to remember the title so I could track it down. It's about a fairy, Princess Wispy, but she doesn't want to be a fairy. She hates all fairy things. She wants to be a human. So she does. She goes off. She lives with humans. And I really love this story because it's different. I sort of go along and read and think, oh, I know what's going to happen. She's going to live with the humans and she'll realise, oh, I want to go back to my family. But it doesn't follow a predictable path. Plus, Craig Smith, his illustrations are so iconic. So you really can't go wrong. Try and track a copy of this book down. It's a lot of fun. It's really funny. It's a great take off on sort of society and a lot of social things in society, such as consumerism, in a, in a way. I know that sounds a bit heavy topic for a picture book, but what I mean is it shows how Princess Wispy wants to be a human because they can go shopping and they can buy the latest sneakers and they get to act in movies in Hollywood. So it's a really sort of quirky, comical takeoff on those sort of things. And it's fun to see a fairy do the human activities like that. And to see them portrayed in a picture book for kids is definitely something that kids would love. The last one I have is Bev and Kev by Katrina Germain and Mandy Foote. I love this book. It's so wonderful. It won an honour book in the CBCA Awards last year and it really, really deserved it. It's about Bev a giraffe. Everyone keeps telling her she's tall, as though she doesn't know it. And then she gets sick of it and goes off on her own because she just needs a break, she needs alone time. She's tired of being told she's different. She knows she's different. And Katrina Germain taps into something so important here is that if you're different for whatever reason, if you're tall or short or whatever, people point it out to you as though you have no idea. And she does it really cleverly in this story. And I think kids will really relate I think it'll resonate with kids. And then Bev meets Kev, a bird who's very small. And they find that even though they're opposites, they can be great friends because with their differences, they allow each other to be different. And their differences in height is not the focal point of their friendship. It's a wonderful book. Mandy Foote's illustrations of the sort of African landscape are so terrific. And it's full of animals, so always a win with kids. Thank you so much for joining me in the Kidlit Corner today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank I just want to thank everyone for supporting me, for following along. Uh, I try to make these videos short. They always go too long and I apologise for that. But I hope you watch it all the way through. If you've made it to the end, you've got stacks, stacks of great books to read or reread or discover them for the first time but just please share stories encourage kids to be different encourage yourselves to be different find different stories about being different and let me know in the comments if you have a book about being different that i haven't mentioned i'd love to know what it is and 
I love sharing books and sharing stories and advocating them and promoting them. Old books, new books. <laughs> so, I really hope that you enjoy the video and I hope that you find out if you didn't already know, it's okay to be different. And if you ever need help with anything, with being different or with any problem, you can always find it in a book.